What's cracking, y'all? If you're watching this, it's probably the first time. First time many of you guys are watching and or hearing or listening to the Why You Yelling podcast. This is the first time we ever did it on video. This is a podcast. I started back in the spring. We obviously fucked it up first time on video. We didn't have audio for the first minute or so. We're, we're going to start the podcast in a second. I want to give you a quick intro, though. The Why You Yelling podcast is something I started back in the spring. It's a podcast about basically the brand, but also our experiences growing this as a business, marketing, and a lot of stuff that we just talk about is, is very like lifestyle focus. So whatever's going on in our lives, I think it's super relatable for a lot of people, especially people around my age right now. I started it last spring. Steve jumped on with me for the last two months. I want to say maybe five or six episodes. We put one out every Sunday morning. It's a long form piece of content just like this. Basically, we, we do a deep dive on everything that's going on within the brand and the business and in our lives. It's a podcast I really, really enjoy doing personally. And I kind of want to, you know, try to get a little bit more traction on it. So I, th I figured I'd throw the next couple episodes up onto YouTube in full video form. So this won't be, this probably won't be an every Sunday thing with the videos, but it probably will be for the next two or three weeks. So if y'all enjoy, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, but more importantly, go subscribe to the podcast because it will be in any podcast stores. That's it. Enjoy. Cause we're about to turn the volume on test skirt. Yeah, we're live. It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? Skirt. Love the buffers. Love the what? It's like a buffer. It's like in between when we have some dead space, just in, hit a skirt in there. In between that. when you don't answer me. <laughs> when I literally start the episode with the why are you yelling and you just don't say anything. It gets you mad and it gets me happy. <laughs> it doesn't get me mad. I like, literally so can't like, look at you. We're going to need a mirror here. Just fucking move the thing like this. Just move the, yeah, like mic. It's not that hard. Move the mic. Well, you, you're not a robot. You're not on a railroad. Like, <laughs> I am Albert. I'm not a robot. Stop. So, so this is a soundboard. They, are we videotaping this too, or is this is strictly? Well, it's the video camera is actually on, and then I realize there's no microphone on top. So it's and just, like the the audio that picks up from the camera is so bad. Okay, so we'll just call that an L right now. Nick bought a soundboard for why yelling. Probably for every content you're using moving forward. The Roadmaster. No, this is gonna stay down here because. Basically, what this replaces is that red box upstairs, that metal red box, mm -hmm. but this is obviously... Ten times better. Yeah, it's called the Roadmaster Pro, and it has, like, a ton of different functionality on the board for it, where, like, you hear this. Skirt! Oh, shit. Skirt! I'm so sorry. <laughs> I tried doing that with my foot. Um, it's not easy being a production. Yeah, now I'm... I'm Imagine I'm, a guy in SNL. He probably has, like, 90 switches. 100 of them. Ike does this shit. Like, that's, Animal told me to get this one because it's so, like... When when we get good at it, you could like sync your phone up and take like vo like calls and stuff. You can you like Bluetooth it and stuff. So it's, it's like super super powerful once you know what you're doing. But we're just never gonna figure. It. Honestly, like I don't even know if like first time caller, long time listener. Yeah, like I don't even know this is working right now. I'm not. I'm like I think we're recording. I think the SD card's in there. Like I hope it is. I don't like. I don't like the situation <laughs> at all. I ain't gonna hit it. All right. Uh, yeah. So we're recording on there. That thing's a fucking beast. And uh, it's just it, I've I've wanted to get one of these for a while, but mm -hmm. like. It, it, that won't fit on my desk upstairs. Not at know? all. It's huge. Yeah. Plus, I'd like, I, I wouldn't be able to do videos like and actually concentrate because I'd just be like, fucking, <laughs> like what we're doing now. I'd just be slapping it the whole time. I think this is a good platform to start so you get comfortable with it. And then mm -hmm. from there, you just put like a second desk just, just for your left hand. Yeah. And like Ike's also like the producer for Animals House and shit. So he's not actually worrying about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's like using that while like the, this is like actually a board for people that are professional producers, you know, not like content guys. So you have no reasoning of getting this. Uh, this is like pretty much out of pure laziness from us. Like for me wanting to, it, it, it stems out just the fact that I was tired last week and I was like, I don't want to do the fucking podcast upstairs. Let's do it downstairs. And I was like, ah, it's so annoying moving the entire Scarlet all the way down here. So let's just get one that we don't have to do that with. Like Bill Gates has said, you don't pick the smartest person. You pick the laziest because they find the fastest way to do it. It's a great fucking quote. It really, really is. And this is a fact of what he said. Yeah. Gates, you're ahead of the time. Hit that skirt. Are you calling me the modern Skirt. day Gates? No. Better? Yeah. It's tremendously. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So. I, I, texted, I texted you what, yesterday. I was like, oh, can I come Wednesday? And you go, I know I say this a lot, but this is the busiest week of my entire life. Up to this point, this is my first free time this week. Any freak outs or was this just straight <clears throat> grinding? It's just straight fucking beef grinder. Yeah. Fucking this is my grind house. There's no other like it, Steve. That's how you're going to answer that <laughs> question. <laughs> like, you uh, are so shot. 
No, I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are, because that was like an awful. Well, it's, it's third. <laughs> like, I asked you a serious question. You go, it's a beef grinder in here. Thir- <laughs> <laughs> I just had beef before in this fucking grind house. It's Thursday at like 5 p.m. And uh, I've bas- basically been working from when my eyes open to when my eyes close every day this week. But like, it's because, um, actually, I can't really, t- I guess I don't know why, but I just have, it, it's it's the normal content that we've been making. But on top of that, there's a lot of like random things that are, that are happening that I want to keep on top of, like Clubhouse, the app. Mm-hmm is getting really interesting. I spent a lot of time on there and then there's, I haven't explored yet. So, so clubhouse is, is cool. Cause it's like, uh, it's, it's drop in audio. So it's like, it's like, if you wanted to live stream a podcast, that's basically what it is. And it's, it's, it's weird and different because like people like you are not on, like you're on it, but you're not a- actively using it. Exactly. And it's one of those things where like, it's kind of like the creators are starting to feel for what, their platform will be and then they're going to just get a huge audience after right so it's basically like you know how every like creator is like you got to make sure you're first to market on this new platform or whatever yeah. like that's what clubhouse is except we're going there to build an audience except it's only creators on there because every creator is like you got to get to the platforms to be the first creator but now the platform you think they're saturating it already or is it, it just- it's all creators so yeah. so what's cool is like someone made a clubhouse or a club for fantasy sports networking in yeah. a sense, right? And I know the guy who, who started it, so he added me, and I'm like an admin, so I'm like one of the go-to guys in it. And the club's moving pretty quickly. It's got like 500 people, but it's not people who would come in there to be like, you know, who are your favorite running backs for this year? It's like people like, how do I get better at content creation? How do I get so better? So it's kind of like you're behind the scenes, but now... It's exactly that, and it's awesome. scalable right now. Wow. Which is why I'm like kind of in love with it, and I'm becoming like a, a thought leader in the space for it. And a lot of bigger people are still like hesitant to get on onto it. I, I think a lot of people in the space are, aren't, they don't want to do the same type of content I'm doing with the business stuff. For so sure. it, this is kind of like perfect for me because it it's is kind of explo- outlet. Yeah. It's a great outlet for me. That's why I'm spending like five, six hours. Can you preload things that you previously done or it's all live right now? It's only live. They're rolling out a feature where you could record what's going on in the room. So you could use it elsewhere, but you can't, you can't upload. I don't think they'll ever allow you to actually upload. Like, I think podcasts. that's smart because it's not going to uh, overwhelm people. It's like, you're just getting there for the content, you see a title and you're yeah. like, Hey, I want to learn this today. And it's like, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's so new right now. So that most of the rooms are like very basic. And it's like, you could tell it's just people trying to like build their audience. And it's not like, not, not a lot of stuff's like super valuable right now, but just like every platform, people are going to get super creative on it. And it should be fun to see how it kind of evolves. Like one idea we have, it's basically like me, that kid, Sal, that, mm-hmm. you know, DM you and, the guy JL who started the the fantasy group that's growing quickly. Like me, us three are kind of like the admins for it. And one idea we had was like a fantasy uh, shark tank. So it's like people can pitch us their ideas and it's either people creating products because the guy JL has like a product software engineering background and they could either pitch us products that they want to introduce into the fantasy space and we can like pick parts, pick apart it. Or we were thinking, you know, we'll, we'll get creative as we possibly can. But like if, you know, if I need someone that I want to come on my channel and be like, oh, I need someone to fill a dynasty spot on my on my YouTube channel or a podcast or whatever. Like they can pitch themselves as content creators. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's it's it, it's there's there's a lot of avenues you can go with if you get creative. So it's been a fun space. So I've spent a lot of time there. I don't have a lot of free time as it is. So like adding that onto it is is uh, what made this week hectic. And then the behind the business interviews. You know, as I'm inter- you guys have big names. That's what I'm saying. Like as I'm interviewing bigger people. Like it, this week was. Yesterday was the president of Monkey Knife Fight. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're a company. They just got acquired by Bailey's for ninety mil. That's wild. So like, it's that guy. And then today was the CEO of Sleeper. They just raised like thirty mil in September. Like, I gotta adjust to their schedules. You know what I'm saying? So if they're like, I can't do next week. Like, can you get on today? I'm like, yeah, of course. But that also means like I gotta do back to back days of like research and shit. You know? So um, that's what this this week has kind of been about. And then doing like I had a guest pod earlier this week. I got one tomorrow. I'm doing. And then. Um, I was going to do like live stream Saturday, but I got to help Mel and Shannon are moving Saturday. So like yeah. I told them I would help them with that. So it, this, this, this week has just been like a confluence of a bunch of different fucking random things happening at once. So I haven't had like well, time. Yeah. Like it's, it's always going back to you trying to balance your life for work and your life for pleasure essentially. And mm-hmm. at some point I feel like you just have to, you're just grinding and then you're just going to, fi- you have to figure it out. But yeah. Um, I, I, I actually did do one. One personal thing this week, which is like kind of, kind of not notable, I guess, but do we have a, a nickname for? for uh, 
Last time we called her, it was terrible though. We need big a better. clock bay. But why don't we just call it London Bay? London, just call her London. We you gonna throw the bay at the end? That's up to you. Have you grown up? <laughs> what do you mean if I grown up? You're the one who just fucking every girl you've talked to that I needed like tabs on was bay in the end. I thought you did that. No <laughs> shit. Uh, well, her. I told you her brother was visiting. Yeah, from overseas. So I I was at her apartment. I met her brother and her best friend. How was that? I actually met her best friend like a week prior, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, But we were like all together at the same time. So it was like, uh, it was fine. Like it was cool, whatever. But I feel like it was, it was like a a big step. I could tell like it was definitely important to her, you know? I mean, it was kind of like when she came over for like Super Bowl. Like, sure. I don't like really bring girls around like that. No, that's when you know it's. I I was like kind of, I was like kind of nervous about it, you know? Not not that I felt like anything would happen, but just like a natural I mean, we have sisters, so we know how it feels. Like, you kind of need a nod of approval, even as a younger or older brother that oh this guy it's he seems chill you yeah know? and i think like you and me are, are pretty like inviting people i think yeah. our group of friends has always kind of been that way like anyone brings like an outside person to it we're always like benefit of the doubt for sure like try to have yeah. fun and if if that person's like the worst then you- i disagree i think our group of friends in the beginning were awful at that i don't think so dude really yeah i, I think thought complete opposite weren't. i always I mean, Maybe that's a personal thing. I don't know. But I feel like even when the whole group was in a corner, you would always branch out and talk to them. Maybe. And then I started. I mean, I've, I could talk to anybody, so it's always been easy for me. But I think it comes back to me also judging at first. Yeah. And then, like, I'll be honest with the person. I'm like, oh, the first time I met you, I thought you were big. You, you're, you're actually like that with everybody, I feel like. Yeah. You're always the, like, first time I met you, you were a motherfucker. And, the, you know, like, and, I, yeah, it's funny. Even my boss was like, you're so critical on people. I'm like, why am I? There's no, is this like an insecurity? And I, I don't know what it is. And I'm trying to get better at it. Cause even at, when I say it, I don't even mean it, Yeah. but I'm I like, know. look at this <laughs> cunt. And they're like, why? They're just walking. And I'm just like, I don't know why I said that. Are you, did- are you like that with uh, I know obviously Michelle's like married and you know, all your sisters are basically married at this point, but I like, hated them. Yeah. Yeah. I hated right. both of them. I, I guess it's funny. Cause like with, with Kelly, my sister, I was, I'm always, uh, like, so oh, I'm just like, whatever, you know, if she's like bringing a guy around, I'm like very, I'm very friendly towards him. Right. It's like my sister's fucking boyfriend or whatever. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna be a dick just, just for the sake of being dick. Cause I don't want to make like her uncomfortable. I don't want to make the situation uncomfortable. So I've always been on the side of like being friendly. Like if you bring a friend around to a party, I'm not going to be a fucking dick for no reason. I'm going to want them to feel welcome. No, exactly. But I will say, I will, I'll say that like whisper it to somebody I know, but I would never say like mm-hmm. be a dick to them. <laughs> and I don't like, is it a, like a Tourette of mine? I don't know what it is. And I still do it to this day. And I don't mean it. I never mean it when I say it. But in my head, the first thing I say, I'm like, look at this asshole with those <laughs> apple yeah. bottom jeans. Yeah, yeah. Like, why do I do this? I need help actually for I'm this. I'm not sure. You should and, go to the therapist. That's what Heather said, and I. I want to go to therapist. I would go. Actually, I don't even like know. I don't. I don't think I need a therapist. I just think I need an outside perspective. I guess if that's therapy. Yeah. But I don't want to pay for. I just want to like talk to like a homeless person and him be like, "Yeah, I get it." And also, this is what you should change. I'm like, ah. Oh, but like therapy, yeah. But like homeless people aren't going to be giving you advice or their point of view on it. Like therapy therapists get paid to actually they're professional like they know why certain things are happening you know what i don't i don't i don't think i want to um go down to knowing actually what's wrong same you know i i just want them to fix like the face value things like hey can i stop being a cunt how do i do that yeah and they tell me like four exercises i can do like you are smart you're pretty (laughs) you're handsome say that to yourself in the mirror yeah and everything gets fixed but yeah um i don't actually think i'd want like going to a therapist I think that would make me. I think this is our ther- therapy. In a way, this is. Yeah, we've always talked, I guess, deeply. Once one of us have an issue, but the funny part, we don't give solutions. We just do it and go like, "Zam, zam." I guess I'm next up. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be like that. Yeah. Like you're you're out the queue. I wonder like when my fucking dip's gonna happen. Buy the fucking dip. Always buy the dip. Buy Ye- Steve's depression dip. So, skirt. So, so are you done with work today and then tomorrow? Do you have free time or are you just? Uh, still grinding till Sunday. Actually, well, the other thing is we're still working on the website, mm-hmm. which, um, dude, what happened was like I got to the point where I've, I I was like uh, uncomfortable enough with the web developer 
that we weren't like making enough progress and I need to get a pro- I, we had we talked about this? No, you said it. You said you felt like he was taking his time, but this is your f- main priority might not be his. Yeah, so did what you ha- just find him like through YouTube or how did it- Well, he hit me up and he was like I'm an app developer. He's like I've been following your stuff. I like really like what you're doing. If you have any projects in mind, you know, mobile or or web, let me know. We can hop on a call. And at that point I had wanted to build the app. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't talked about it, but I was like, oh, this is on my mind. Like, why don't we just like get on a, a, an initial introduction call? And we talked for like an hour and a half about it. And he was like, yeah, I'm so fucking down to help out with that. And, uh, I mean, he believes in, he's done all this work up to this point without taking a single dollar or anything. I haven't, I haven't paid him shit. Oh, and so I didn't yeah, know that. I thought this was, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have paid someone unless like I knew exactly what I was getting into or seen like proof of exactly what I wanted the end outcome to be in a sense. Um, so I got to the point where I was like, we need to start moving quickly. And the dude I was talking about, Clubhouse, JL, has the tech mobile development background. So I was like, yo, can you do me a favor and like hop on a call with me and this dude? Because you'll know from a tech standpoint, like where he's at. And if, if you're he, wasting your time. Right, exactly. So we got on a call and uh, it wasn't like a, it wasn't the way I made it seem was not a, a vicious like, you know, like I'm putting you through the intervention rigors. type. Yeah. Yeah. I, I basically was like, Hey, listen, um, because in web development, here's the thing. The people who create the websites, it's like, you're feeding them a piece of code. Like you show them what you want and they build it. There's a whole another component to it called like the UI UX, like user interface, user experience. So when you go on a website, you go on there and things are like easily organized and shit, right? So that's like almost like the creative side of it. There's two completely different sides of web development. And basically this guy, JL was like, what's probably happening is he's a hardcore coder and you have to put exactly what you want in front of him and he will turn it out for you. If you're trying to give him your vision for it, it's really hard for a guy like that to be creative and make it aesthetically pleasing. So he's like, you probably need somebody who's professional with web development, like UI, UX, to give your user that comes onto your website like a good experience, you know what I'm saying? So we got on the call and he was like, no, he's doing like the guy's doing fine. He's like, you just, you guys are communicating in two different languages when it comes to web development and like vision and like seeing where you want something to be without having, it's almost like, it's almost like if you, uh, you're telling someone, you give someone like a raw steak, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I need you to serve this to us for dinner. But yeah. the UI UX guy is the one who says, okay, open the drawer, take out a knife. You need to make sure you tell him it's a steak knife, not a butter knife. You need to make sure you're using olive oil instead of, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, it's wow. all, it's yeah, all like it's the little gets, pieces. It's very of, intricate. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, it's all the little pieces that can get lost in communication. If someone's not an expert in design versus actual coding and, and these other functions that you need on the website. So, uh, it get yeah, it, it gets a little, it gets a little hectic and that's what we've been working on. So I've been on a few calls Regarding that as well, which has made the week a little bit fucking So busy. where does that leave you two? Uh, we are, JL helped us like bridge the gap in communication and mm-hmm. we're simpling, we're, we're, we're cutting down some of the extra fat that we had on the website that seemed more of like my vision, but almost not a practical thing. So we're cutting that out. We're getting the, the most basic form of something that is going to be viable in the market yeah. first. And then we build from there. Yeah. So something mean, I'm comfortable giving to the audience. Just like iPhones, everything it gets updates. So at, le- yeah. at least when you have like a platform, then you can keep doing enhancements. And then that's where you're going to start. Hey, this is working, but let's make it better like that. So I think that's how you had to think. And that you just wanted the whole cake. Yeah. Yeah. With like, the sprinkles. And frosting, right away in like a month. Funfetti, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this kid was probably like, Dude, what? Yeah, I mean, he's like, he's a dude. He's an older. Dude. He's yeah, got like yeah. twenty years experience doing this shit. But yeah, that that was definitely like the communication was was a problem. I didn't really understand that there was so much intricacy to it until like jail. Yeah, well, that's of, cool. Then now, that yeah, we're in, we're in a much which much better. Are you still place. on pace or is it still slow as shit? I think we'll be able to do like a soft launch by the end of next week, hopefully. Oh, okay, nice. Um, but we, I mean, we put the pre order pre orders out, obviously, and then, um, and, and and the other shit like on top of this too is. Uh, you know, like I'm, I'm like involved in the stock market now. I'm trying to like get more involved in like uh, understanding NFTs and like mm. the NBA Top Shot and stuff like that because I'm, I'm interested in seeing how that stuff works out. So I'm putting a lot of time and research into different type of you know investments, man. I'm trying to diversify the portfolio. No, that's awesome. And I, like you sent me that article about Top Shot, and I know he's talking to Sal on live stream about it, yeah. and I was confused at first, and literally you dumbed it down like. You could take pictures of the Mona Lisa, but it's not the original. So why yeah. do you care about the? And that's where I, 
I think that's where old mindsets get stuck on how why you're monetizing, why people are doing that. And then once you take off that layer of it, you're like, this once, makes once it clicks with you, you're like, just, oh, the, the 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 fucking possibilities are so endless mm-hmm. with this stuff. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, it's one of those things that like you know people who got in early are going to try to explain it, and most people are like, this is stupid. A yeah. year later, everybody's going to understand what the value is behind it. So I think um, in that article, the, one of the best parts, he was like, everything starts out and people pretend like it's a toy and no one takes it seriously. Mm -hmm. And then once it grows, everyone's, Oh, I missed that out. I missed out. What do I do now? And like you said, you said, you don't know if top shot is going to be your Avenue of what you think is going to, uh, you know, obviously top shot's going to be top shot and whatever it turns into, but you're looking for what's going to make sense for you and what you are going to believe in. Cause you're mostly investing in things that gut feeling. So at NBA top is not, what you are passionate about. So did like, do you have any sort of idea of what you're looking at? Uh, I think what I think will end up being the biggest market. I think individual content creators are mm-hmm. the ones that are going to be shifting the landscape of just like culture and the world over the last, uh, the next like 10, 15 years. So I actually think uh, NFTs of individual pieces of content will be wildly valuable in like 10 years. I'm not like ready to invest mm-hmm. into anything, but I think some of your favorite artists some of your favorite um youtubers some of your favorite whatever i think if you make nfts of some of the best moments like that's going to be really cool to have you know yeah like, it's just like they made a market for memes it's a meme market imagine imagine buying the first like uh whatever was one of the most popular the grumpy cat or some shit that's what i'm saying like imagine nfting the first meme of that and being like i have the first meme yeah like, it sounds so it dumb may, but, but it's it, what our culture is yeah you know what i'm saying like that shit will be and it's out. amazing once you start thinking about it like that and i think i also crazy. i also think something i said on the live stream is nfting making tickets nfts like i saw that i i ask i left like shortly after that just because i had to go yeah. and you suck but once you said that, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's 50 50 on that. I think, I mean, the, but I get it. Like I still have my first Yankee game uh, ticket. I do. Well, people will be, what it is is like these NFTs are going to become collector items in a sense that like, you know, people, people it, buy the first Super Bowl tickets. Like still. You, you'd want, but yeah. this makes it so much more accessible. Like you might've got into collecting tickets if you didn't have to physically store them and keep them in a good condition. NFTs wipes out all that bull, physical bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you just have to get your mind off of that. Yeah. And once that you do. Physical property isn't what we care about. And that's so true because anything you do is with your phone. Mm-hmm. If you don't have your phone for a day, you lose your mind. There's, you could pay through your phone. You could talk through your phone. You could text. Web. Everything is through your phone. So wait, And wait till we have fucking headsets on and shit like VR type of stuff. Like everything is going towards this, this avenue. It's very clear and plain to see bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Much more difficult to see like... You know, most of this shit is going to fail. Most of the shit's going to be floppy. So everything that comes out now because it's so new is going to be so fucking hyped up and everyone's going to get really excited about things and probably lose a lot of money doing stupid shit. And a uh, few things will win, but, you know, it's almost worth in- it. That's why it's worth investing in the things that you're passionate about. Yeah, like in my company, we we made a new system kind of like for cash registers and it has so many issues all the time. But how they explained it was when Apple first came out, with the and everyone said you need a keyboard. No one's gonna buy a phone without a keyboard. They were just ahead of the time, and you just kept grinding, kept doing enhancements, kept mm-hmm. doing that. And they said, "Yeah, we're the first, so it kind of sucks. But once it's perfect, we're gonna be ten years ahead of everybody, and that's when we take over. And that's essentially what's happening now. Think of uh, the first fucking like cool app on the iPhone was was like you fucking doing this with a fake beer. Yeah, and that was the coolest shit ever. You remember I wanted to make an app of you could send anonymous middle fingers to people. Yeah, that was fire though. We should have done it. Yeah, we should have. That that still would play. Um, what's your guy's name? Let's DM him. My the web dev. Yeah. All right. No, we're gonna have to figure that out. Anonymous dumb. middle fingers. You don't know who comes from, and Sick. it's just a yeah. middle finger. I'm all in. Mm-hmm. You think I'm gonna get this dog? What did they say? Oh yeah. I so oh, yeah. I, so <laughs> every. You know, once you have a significant other, you probably send so many dogs to each other. If you're a dog person, I'm assuming cat people do the same thing. Maybe fish people do the same thing also. But, yeah, I, are you good? 
I th- like I'm like I, I I missed that part for a second, and I think I picked it back up. Oh, about the fish? Yeah, that was like definitely like a dry sense of humor joke that didn't land because I wasn't listening, <laughs> and I normally would have laughed at it. Yeah, I felt you a just, little shitty about that. Yeah, sorry. I wish I was closer to the soundboard to um, maybe if put you a look, laughing. Maybe if you looked at me more, I was I, looking right at you. But I was looking at my phone. Well, I don't if know. If you had you sent me a picture of you, <laughs> while I was like, once I could connect the you're phone to this, couples send each other picture of fishes. <laughs> look at this want. koi fish. <laughs> Fuck that. So I, I send dogs to Heather all the time. She does vice versa. She sends dogs like in wheelchairs. And I'm like, <laughs> and we live on a second floor. I don't want, she's like, but we call them Hot Wheels. And I'm like, I do not want Hot Wheels here. He's fat and he's, oh, like, I don't want him. He has one leg. And I, shut up. I like big dogs. She likes yeah, small do. dogs. Yeah, I do. Fuck off. And finally, I sent the dog. She's like, wow, he's handsome. This dog's pretty good looking. For like, usually adopted dogs, you get those brown or I'm not going to get into it. Just ugly dogs. And I, I love them. She's like, yeah, let's try. And she definitely didn't think we had like any chance because I've, I've tried a lot. And did I, she think you had no chance or did was she like secretly hoping that it like didn't go through? This is a big life change. Oh, yeah. I think both. I think she's like, we never get picked. And also like our life is, is it there yet? And both are. She's totally correct. No. That's what I told them. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, tell the people we'll, on the phone. we'll get to you. <laughs> but I, I filled out the whole application. I made it seem like I'm a saint. I put you as a reference. My old manager as a reference. They call my landlord. And I know everyone's been called. So now it's it's time. Your it's old time. landlord was your other reference? No, no. Um, what is the same landlord? My oh, old no. manager, okay. Donna. She was a politician. She said she made it seem like I was about to run. Like, is it going to be in a White House one day? Type of the, the, you give this dog a chance, he's going to be in the next one in the White House. So what did they say to you? They just called you and just asked you who I am, what I do. And well, they basically like start off. Aunt? They they basically start off by like wanting me to verify if I like knew you or not. They'd be like, well, you know, where does Steve live right now? In an apartment? Does he rent? Does he have a house? Does he live with anybody? You know, so it's like it's like how do you know Steve and like prove how you know Steve? <laughs> and then it's like. uh you know, what's your work situation to, to see if like someone's going to be home, if you guys travel a lot, are you like active? Uh, and I was like, nah, Steve's fat as shit. Yeah. This dog's <laughs> fucked. Um, they, they just like ask like what type of person you are and shit, you know, and they, it's very like base, base level questions, but I could see a lot of people like panicking, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, I, I was just told the truth. I was like, like you had, they asked about Rocky, your previous dog. Yeah. And uh, they did ask one interesting question that was like, if, the dog is super young and he needs to learn how, like to be obedient or, or, uh, you know, he needs to learn to get like potty trained or whatever. Yeah. What do you think they would do? Uh, and I was like, well, I think they would try to figure it out together as, as a team and like probably have fun trying to do it. But if they couldn't figure it out, they would hire someone like professional. Yeah. And I like, I actually, that was the only one I answered where I don't know if what I said was true or not. So I think I know what what the issue is. So I didn't read it really. Read like it. you're like you're stubborn, but like I I I think I'm a good dog trainer. Like Rocky, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I'm a good dog trainer. You have one dog, and, and he Ro- was, when Rocky needed to get trained, you were like four. No, you're like okay, six. I was eighth grade. Eighth grade. Okay, sixth grade. You, you weren't training your fucking dog. Whatever. My point. Yeah, you're you're hundred percent right. Facts. I hope Heather doesn't listen to this. <laughs> I know nothing. I know, which is why I'm saying just hire a fucking professional. Yeah, I mean, if if it came to that, like this dog literally would just stare at me and take a shit right in front of me, and I had nothing. That's like, basically like what I told the person on the phone. I was like, I mean, listen, if he's like peeing all over the house or something, like they're they're not above getting professional help. But there was either. a there was like a part was like, what 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 don't you like? I'm like not potty trained dogs, and I didn't read the bio, so I think that if I get fucked, it's on me. They ask you what you don't like about dogs, and you said not potty trained ones. Like people that don't train their dogs. Like this dog just pee- like I hate uh, like people that had opportunities to teach a dog not to use the bathroom inside, and like they just like poop on the floor, and you're like, oh, dogs will be dogs. It's like no. You know what I'm? You know what I'm thinking? This is from a, a shelter. Yes. Like it's harder. The, it's easier to buy a house than get a dog. Well, I was gonna say with the dog, people that adopt children. Mm-hmm. I was going to say it must be like a rigorous process for it. But then I'm thinking like maybe I've just seen too many movies, but I feel like those adoption centers like want to get the kids out. Well, but I guess the dogs do too. It's di- when we like adopted Christabel, it took like two years. Really? Yeah. But it could also have been circumstantial. 
I don't know, but people came and like interviewed us, put me in another room, like with a bear, and be like, "Does your so oh, touch the bear? Where, where does your parents touch him? Like, <laughs> touch the bear. like what, dude? Wait, are you serious? <laughs> I swear, I had no idea what the, I was <laughs> like. Your, where, where would your parents touch this bear? If yeah, they were some in- bullshit like that, and like, and I was like, <laughs> I was like in sixth or seventh That's grade, so, so I was just funny. like, "What do you?" My parents don't touch bears. Like, what do you mean? I was, I'm a bear. Yeah, I'm a big bear. Where would your parents touch you if they were in here? And they were like, "Do you want this girl here?" Where would you touch this girl if she Dude, was? Dude, it was it was wild. it was weird. They they would come to your house and interview you and everything. And she was my cousin, so I I completely probably think it's different when you just adopt. Someone you don't even know. Yeah, but it, was, it took like two years, dude. I mean, at this cut. point, you've been trying to get a dog for like five years. You know what? I, I have and I haven't. I would. Like just, you're ready to take this dog ASAP when they call you back. Yeah. So this is my thing. I like I've talked to Heather about it, and you know I love dogs. I'm I am a dog person. I think, and I do think that it does change your life. This is like one. This is like, you get this dog, and like you're you're, you're another step away from like civilization again. Like next time I have a party and I'm like, yo, you guys want to come? You're like, I have to look after my fucking. What are you gonna name it? You name it like fucking Apollo chocolate milkshake. Apollo? That's not bad. That's pretty good, right? It's Apollo Rocky Apollo. This is bullshit. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You didn't think about that? No, not at all. No. But there's also a a dog daycare right next to our house. Is that shit open at yeah, fucking it's 11 p.m. 24 hours. What? Yeah. It's like you could leave it there. Oh, so it's just like a bunch of dogs are like shitting on each other. And yeah. Like, sick. I know it's a big responsibility and Heather is also freaking out about it. And, and it's in like a valid argument. Like this is going to change your life. And my counter is, yeah, I know. I, I 100% agree. I do want a dog and I think it would be awesome to have one. And I understand the circumstances, but I also think overall my life is calming down. Not like in a bad way, but we're not going out every weekend. I oh, I still have to work. Friday and Saturdays and Sundays sometimes and those I know I can't even do anything because my body like would be so tired from that and I know that's changing but also when it comes to like if we have a weekend plan I'm gonna pay the money and put this dog into boarding or set like I'm not gonna be like no we have to leave it here I know what a dog costs and I'm fully aware that if I was spend a hundred bucks to go have fun for a, a night I'm gonna do it and I don't think there's anything wrong with that screenshot for one and you need to pay for my Ubers. Like, Steve, it's $100 to have fun for tonight. You said it. For a dog. N- NFT that comment right there. Yeah, but you don't... You, Non-fungible token-ass fucking comments you're making on my You're podcast. not my... I'm not your caretaker. Skirt! But do you think I'm making a mistake? No, I don't. I, when I genuinely told the, peop, the people, I was like, they're ready for a dog. Like, yeah. they want a dog. They're going to take care of this dog. They're going to fucking love the dog and wrap this shit up and go out on a date with me. You thought she was hot? Like She had a cute voice. It wasn't like actually. I was like thought it. It wasn't so much like I wanted to ask her on a date. It was. It was. It was like I came off so well that I was. I was like I. I, I thought she. You was can't gonna, miss right now. I thought she was going to ask me at the end and be like, "Are you sure you don't want this dog?" Imagine. That, that's what I thought was coming. And I feel like if me and Heather went on vacation, I was like, "Can you take care of my dog?" You would do it easily. You know, second. Yeah. like you have a huge spot, and I'm. The dog's potty trained too. Like after yeah, that, you just have care to. At all. Yeah, I, we have enough people, and if you're having a party, I'm pretty sure I could bring my dog. Probably. Yeah. But I would let you know if I'm like, this shit's going to be fucking annoying. Crazy. And I would understand and then put it in a... Put it in a bucket. Yeah. Just put it put in, in a cage. Put it in the and garbage. a whole bunch of food in it. Put it in a dumpster. Yeah. I mean, I'm going back and forth. Are we ready or are we not? But I also didn't think we're going to get this far. But I, I don't feel like I need to back out. I think this is what I want. What other steps are... Like, how long you got to wait, you think? Dude, they said almost... It, it could wait, like, two weeks. That's not that long. That's, like, maximum amount of wait. Well, we're going on vacation in April, so you'll probably have this dog sooner than later. <laughs> what the fuck? You're going to get it and immediately give it to me? Hey, you never know when you're going to get a dog. You literally sign up for it. You know exactly when you're getting it. Well, yeah, you might have to take care of it. It's fucking ridiculous. Have you decided yet or if you're going to move out of this place? No. You need to start. March is upon you. You're gonna have, you need to give them at least 30-day notice. Yeah, my lease is up last, April. Day, ap- last day of April. Last day of April? Last day of April. I feel like you should start thinking about it. I mean, I'm thinking about it, but like, there's no, what I'm going to do, there's no point of me, I can't decide until I know if I love a place. It's going to come down to me looking at a place and being like, I want this, I've decided I'm going to move out, okay? So for me to look at places now makes no sense because I can't have them. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, you you are forgetting New York City's empty. Like you can, like people, I'm not going to pay extra months. No, but people it. are holding apartments for people. That, uh, yeah, I guess that's true. But like, uh, dude, I don't know. Um, I, I still feel like it's too, it's mid February. I have like a month and a half, two months, February, March. April. I've, yeah, I've, I've two and a half months before my lease is up. So I mean, ma- this time next month, I'll give myself a four week cushion to start looking. And that's more yeah. than enough time. If I could look at two or three apartments a day, I'll be fine to do it. And it, that will be dependent on whether or not I find somewhere. I'll see. Well, if you don't, we need to fix your background. Yeah. Because against Sal's background when you did the live interview. See, I don't want a background like that, though. But I, you need some color, I think, yeah. or something. That's true. Someone said on the last Fade the Public episode, like, it looks like we were in a, uh, we're like in a hospital. You know what it is? Because the whole background is just white. It's the whiteboard. It's the white BDGE sign. The wall is white. So that's understood. Um, the background is fine if we fuck it up. I was thinking about taking the whiteboard down, putting it somewhere else. Mm-hmm putting something colorful there. I want to still get like a neon retro sign that says like on air or live recording or something, which would be good. It's just, I mean, you know what it is. I've complained to you fucking eight times about the lighting upstairs. It's just the fact that there's nothing coming from overhead or like some kind of central lighting system is just, it's literally that bulb up there. There's one of them up there and that's the entire lighting system upstairs. That's awful. That's ridiculous. And it's something like, that's that's the thing. This is the first time moving at, in in to my own place. It was just something I didn't really think about. I saw the space like, that's the other thing for people renting. When you see a place during the day, wildly different than when you see it at night because the lighting makes everything look so much fucking you're, better. And you're a big light guy. Yeah. I'm not. I love darkness. I like I'm time and place. Like I, this, the downstairs is a different like ambiance than the upstairs, but I needed the upstairs to be way more energetic and it's just, it's, it's not there. So ideally, like I'm excited to start looking. Um, in a perfect world, I find a place downtown that I like more than this. That's less money than this, and I would move. I'm not. What if they say the good price? You love the place. You come back here. They match it. If it's if it's fifty fifty, I would move. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna find a place that I really really like. The only way I probably come back here is if I just you know I'm not gonna move for the sake of moving. We'll put it that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to find a, a place that's like, ah, it's kind of like on par, but like nothing, there's no leverage other than I have to move all my shit. Like, I'll probably just stay. But like, clearly, I'm not that excited about staying. So I would mm-hmm. like to find a place that. And also, you said like Mel and Shannon are leaving. So they're leaving. I'm, I'm helping them move on Saturday. So yeah. So there were your yeah, go tos. So, yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, this year, like, if this place was downtown, I would be fucking ecstatic. Is this building? I mean, Granted, we've all been locked together for quarantine, mm-hmm. but I've made like a lot of good friends within the building that I appreciate. And like, I don't know how that's going to go when they move out. And I, like, obviously, I'd hope we stay friends, but it was like, it was like cool to, you know, hang out with them in here and develop a relationship with. Like, it's not very easy to like meet people our age just if you're in a random apartment building, right? Just like out on the streets and shit. Yeah, you got super lucky. I think it's also due to the rooftop. It was such like a communal mm-hmm. place where like you just shoot your shot. And up there, I'm not saying you were shooting your shot like, just to find a chick that you can have sex with. It was just strictly like... Excuse me. Was that the only reason you went up to them? They they slipped a note. Mel and Shannon slipped a note under my door. Oh, really? I didn't to know To come that. to their party. Remember? I invited you to their party. Did I go? Um, No, I had a date that night, actually. So I didn't go. That was oh. pre-planned. Like, I already had the oh, date. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck, I can't go. Um, So, no. I invited you, and then I was like, we, we could have went, which it probably would have been a fun time, but regardless... That's how that's how like we initially met. They slipped a note under my door saying they were we were having a they were having a party that night. Um they next door I met them on the roof and I met other people on the roof and mm-hmm. shit, but it's just like a it's like a it's a cool little community in here of people. Yeah, and everyone you've like introduced me to have been awesome. And yeah. like I even talked to them. It's very like college dormy vibes. Yeah. And I'm like and that's I'm, what you need right now because hundred percent, yeah. You None of my friends are like in the city. Like none no, of my friends are here. So like I have to make my own friends basically. And I'm hoping when shit opens up, uh, like there are more people that I'm connecting with. Like I had friends in the city, but I feel like I don't, some of them moved away when quarantine hit or waiting for quarantine to like calm down and the city to open back up to come back. Um, and a lot of those people are more of like creative friends, I think, which yeah. would be good for me when things open back up. But you know, it's just like, there, there wasn't much to do this year in terms of, like, networking, meeting people. So having this building was, like, perfect for it. Mm-hmm. Also, too, like, pe- people would say all the time, you can have your dream house, but if you hate your neighbors, it's never going to work out. Yeah, I mean, and a house house not always home. You know? Yeah, for sure. 
I just got an email from the dog place. No way. Yeah, I just don't want to open it. Dude, fucking run it. I don't want to open it. Run it. Damn. No. They didn't, they didn't pick me. They picked someone else? They said, thank you for your interest to adopt one of our adoptable dogs. The dog you applied to adopt, Mighty, was pen, has a pending application. It's no longer available at this time. Damn. I, I'm serious, bro. Dude, I'm shocked. I am. Do you think he's the potty training? I mean, if that was the only flaw in the Dude, fucking armor. Dude, I, 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 I killed that application. I did. I know I did. Fuck. I'm telling you, bro. If like, I, I, yeah, my shit went as smooth as possible. If you, your other reference, and she said like it that. went smooth as possible, also. Shit. Do you think it's because I live in an apartment? Damn. I don't know. I, the, one of the questions was, do they have access to like an outdoor communal place? Yeah. And I was like, they live in an apartment, but they have a park right across the street. And yeah, she was I like, told oh, them that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said too. Um, I almost feel like. I wonder if it's just like the application has to be perfect for it. Or maybe they could be looking for people who are a little bit more like established. Maybe people who are not renting because that suits itself to like a changing lifestyle. One yeah. of the questions they asked me was like, do they see any move, any uh, big time like life movements within the next year? You know, moving jobs, moving to a new apartment, moving to a house or something. I said no, obviously. But, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, they if, if I had to guess adopting something, they look for stability first. Yeah, I get it. I'm bummed, but yeah, I guess, it I is. Tell. I'm sorry. It happens, man. And we, like we said, I was, I'm I'm not out here just trying to adopt just a dog. I'm trying to adopt the dog. That was and it. It happens. This ain't the first time. It ain't gonna be the last. You'll be the reference for <laughs> another one, also. Hell yeah, Mighty, aka Apollo. Sorry, buddy, you ain't coming to Montclair. Now, do you do you keep the name for the next one, or is that like R.I.P. to Apollo? R.I.P. Man, I had I, I yeah I had Zeus one time. <laughs> this was Apollo. You know Hercules. I want Hercules. Heather's not really feeling it. I don't know if I like Hercules. It's like, it yeah. seems too forced. Mm -hmm. Apollo would seem nice. I think he was going to be a big meaty dog. Damn. That's, that's, uh, that shit hurts. But I told Heather, she said, like, if this doesn't go through, we're not, like, don't rush it and we're not just so. I guess I'll be free for the weekends. You're going to help Mel and Shannon move? Not I'm working this weekend. She. What else we got? Um... I actually have something that came up mm -hmm. that I could probably use your opinion on. Nice. So, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike me up. Mike Lou. Making content for Bunk Bed Breakdowns. Killing it. Very good. He's doing an excellent job. Uh, he basically reached out to me and was like, I'm going to start my own Patreon. And... That, you know, I obviously never want to, like, hold people down. And I'm like, you're... You know, he's, he's one of if not the only person within our team that could monetize by himself because he's good at... Smart guy. Good enough at what he does, yeah. And he's built up like a really good following. I think he's going to be a really, really big uh, name within the, the Dynasty space. So, like, basically, we were putting together the draft guide and I was like, yeah, for the Dynasty part, you know, um, I need you guys to finish up your rankings for when I put them in because we consolidate them, myself, Noah's, and Mike's. And then he texts me, he's like, sorry, uh, I haven't got my rankings together. I'm not doing it on the platform that you guys do it on because he's like very big into Excel. He's like, I've been putting together like a crazy, crazy formulas for my rankings that go all the way into like college prospects, like at the freshman level. And oh, I'm like, wow. shit that I don't really follow. And he's like, my rankings are wildly, you know, a ton of work goes into them. He's like, I'm just going to house them only on Patreon. So like. So he's not even giving it to you. He's not giving me his rankings. No. He's still helping with the draft guide. He's doing some of the player profiles mm -hmm. and shit like that. And he's still, you know, he's still making content for the channel and whatever. Um, but this is like the first time that I'm seeing someone branch off under the umbrella. That's yeah. Like, I don't even want to say like branch off cause he's still completely, you know, under big dogs, but like, it's the first time that something monetarily has come up where it's not straight from me. So it's, you know, it's, it's a conversation we've had, you know, a lot on this podcast, uh, the monetary things typically come from me. So now that it's the first time I face something that's not directly from me, you know, what do what do I do? Because I've obviously given Mike a big play. He's 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 grown a big platform for himself. You mm -hmm. know, obviously he's got like ten thousand followers on Twitter. Their YouTube channel is up to like five thousand followers or something, which is mainly mainly. I mean, I'm not taking anything away. They they work really fucking hard to put out a ton of content and shit. Obviously, a lot of the the floors come from my user base over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have like an answer or anything. It's just... It's How do you just, feel about it when he said it? Like, what was your first reaction? Honestly, like kind of not mad, but like, um, I didn't know. I was like kind of confused. I was like, what do I do? Because it's not like he's under contract by big dogs. Mm -hmm. And I can't be like, no, like you have to give me your rankings and 
the money that you make comes back to the business and shit, you know? Yeah. So there's nothing official in place. So there's nothing really I could do. I guess like feelings wise, it felt like, um, it was it like a little bit of a betrayal? Yeah. I don't, I don't even want to. Yeah. I guess like, I mean, it's a word. It's not like, yeah, just raw feelings. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I get that. Cause it's kind of one of those things where you expected him to produce for something that you specifically said. And now he has and said, Hey, I'm keeping the riches to myself and it sucks, but that's one that's of why the- I was like your your outside point of view, and and the thing was like after like two minutes of thinking about it, I'm like I know how hard Mike, Mike like legit. I see really, him on Twitter all the time. Yeah, and like his videos that he puts out like are really really good, like really good dynasty resources. He works super super hard on it, so I never want to like hold him down. Um, I almost just wish there was like more of a conversation of like, you know, if if it was like a monetary thing, like what can I do to rectify this? You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost back to the animal snacks thing, like if there's blinders on from my point of view and I'm not properly showing the value that you're bringing, I wish there was a kind of a conversation first. And I guess maybe that's on me to figure that out. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's a weird situation for me. My outside perspective on this is this is the conversation that's happening. He put his cards out. He goes, Hey, I have something that I know you want that I've put so much work in. That's going to give you so much money. I want this piece of the pie. And I understand that I should be giving it to you, but he's looking out for himself too, which is fair game. You know, he's been doing this content for free and, you know, I, he has a full-time job. Mm-hmm. So he's just hustling and now he wants to see some uh, money come out. So I think even though he said he's going to start his own Patreon, you still have a chance to kind of like counter and be like, hey, so you're doing this because of money. End of the day, this is a, yeah, you he- want to see money out of it? So t- tell me numbers, where, what are you projecting? He's a smart guy. You know, he's a number guy. He definitely has a projection that he's like, this is what I'm bringing in. And if that's, if that's the end game, let's, let's hatch, hash it out. Maybe you are not, maybe you're giving him a percentage of the draft guide or maybe he just wants to be paid on it and deserve his deserving. So I think he does. So he's, he's putting his cards up. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Maybe this late, not this late in the game, he probably should have gave you a heads up of what was in his mind because you never want to go to the boss and say, this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm taking it. Because, hey, if he caught you in a bad day, you could have been like, hey, go fuck yourself. Yeah. You know, because this was owed, you know, but you're not that type of guy. And he knows that. So maybe this was kind of like him saying, this is why I'm doing it. So you have time to figure out how you're going to rectify the situation. Yeah, it's a good point. I think I think he's we've had a, a, a broader conversation, me and him. He comes from like an investing background mm-hmm. and he's worked in capital and he works with like actually financing businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've had conversations about like equity. Um, This was probably like six months ago or so. And I'm like, we're not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, And it's maybe a conversation like next summer or the summer after that or some shit like that. But that's like what he's looking at, you know, long-term. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult. I think the, he could make a, probably a good amount of money doing it on his own individually but he knows he'll make more with you the ceiling for actually having a brand is so high yeah. you know as an individual content creator you can only go so far niching down to like dynasty fantasy football yeah from a branding perspective having equity in a, in a media brand is obviously very high and that's obviously what he's after and i would be too if i was working for me i would be like you know i've been here from the ground i want you know a couple points of that of that equity and that, again like i'm not i don't need to have X number of dollars in my bank account. If, if like that's what's going to motivate people to do so, cool. I also yeah. like someone who's come on very recently, so it's like mm-hmm. I'm not willing to give up fucking something really quickly just because you you know you did well quick. I I value longevity. I evaluate yeah, like I I appreciate more so than talent. I appreciate consistency and hard work and work ethic over a long period of time. So I know you're con- like as as fast as you go up is as quick as you can also go down. Mm-hmm. So as as slow as you go up. I know that's how long you'll be there for me on the flip side of things, you know? So like there's, yeah, there's a few ways to look at it right now. I'm not really like obsessed with getting a quick buck out of it. And you know, he said, he's like, I'll still help out with the draft guy shit that I promised you I'd help with. I think this is probably more of like a sensitive subject, maybe next year when next year rolls around and I might need something from him. The other thing is like, I've been working a lot harder on rookie and dynasty content to the point where I'm not even really sure I need much from a content perspective. They're doing fucking fantastic from like a product perspective. I could probably pull off a lot of it on my own actually. Mm -hmm. Um, But it begs the question, like they are starting to bring in a lot of top of the funnel traffic, a lot of like new eyeballs and organic stuff. 
Uh, and to that, I value that stuff a lot. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily value sales, uh, over a long period of time, but the top of the funnel is what eventually turns into sales. So like, I want to see another like year of exposure. We'll see how this summer goes. If they can like, I think they have the potential to take off and be, you know, a top 10, top five ish fantasy channel on YouTube. Really? Um, semi close to, yeah, not, not to me, obviously, cause I have such a head start, but like in that, in that, in that same vein. So there's that going on. And then, you know, uh, Noah's starting like an NBA Top Shot YouTube channel. Animal started doing like a stock made money. Yeah, channel. we talked about last week that you have so many branches. But like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it's, hard, it's hard to keep it organized when like no one's like <laughs> like fucking under contract and stuff. So it's yeah, it's everyone's following their passions yeah. under our umbrella. And we all knew at a point every most people will be fed up until they, you know, get something out of it other than. Which is why I respect Mike because he's like, I'm worth this. This is what I, the argument I've this been making. Exact, I'm working. Yeah. And show me you're worth it. And Go bring what, in that bag. And that's what I'm saying. He's yeah. got, so I think this, maybe if you tilt this conversation in a sense of saying, yeah, I, I would, I would like you to do that, but also let's see what you bring in, and then let's have a conversation how to make it exclusive to us. Yeah. So maybe he branches out for a little bit, see what he gets. Hey, if it, you, I, I don't know fantasy, but I don't know how much revenue you could just make off of that one part, but. If, if if it's a big if it's a big number then yeah f- he's starting like a discord channel too mm. which is like we have a discord channel and so it's kind of like a competition or, in a sense almost yeah. yeah which is why it's like okay a little off putting you know i should have brought that up probably before but he's like the big dogs dynasty discord is good cuz it's such a big community but in a sense it, it it can lack like it can lack not depth but it it can lack depth a little bit because there are so many people and maybe that's our fault from the beginning cuz that was my vision for it i was like let's bring in enough people where we don't actually have to run it at all times it kind of runs itself with people within the community and that's a good thought process but opening it up to everybody might have hurt us a little bit in the long run yeah um maybe maybe i still think it, it might have been the right move but mike's gonna have something that's very near and dear to him like he's gonna create this very much from like the blocks up stuff with the discord and the patreon and stuff which is great does mike want this full-time kind of yeah, I told we actually had the conversation probably six months ago, and he was like, "Dude, I'm thinking about like he's like I love I love what we're doing. Like I'm working so hard at it. I wish I had more time to invest into it." I was like, "Listen, like you have my support if you want to leave. Like obviously I've done it. So if you need help along the way, like I'm here. I think you should do it if you have some financial backing for it. There's no reason not to take the risk right now. Um, so it's definitely like in his mind. I, I still think he should. Like I think he could be very big force within uh, the industry as a, as a content creator because he works very hard. Um, so I don't know." Well, yeah, it comes to a point where he's seeing, is he worth enough to hold the brand himself or are you willing to, I mean, pay the man and keep him under your umbrella and that's the time, yeah, time will tell. Yeah, that that too, but like, not not to be like fucking diabolical, but like that YouTube channel is under my name, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like my thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, like I... I kind of like control where the content goes. Yeah, no, know? for sure. But I'm saying if he's branching off and just going by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, definitely, I think this should open the gate to just have a free conversation. It's like, so what's your end game here? So obviously it's money. So what's what what what's the purpose and what do you see? Are you are you thinking about branching off? Mm-hmm. Is he ready talking to Noah saying they got a good thing going? I'm not saying they are. This is just all me. It could happen, you know. Maybe yeah. they think. They can support I mean, the thoughts, it. Yeah, the yeah. thoughts run through my mind a little yeah. bit. So it's definitely an open conversation you should have with him and just be like, let's, let's lay it out. Are we dissolving this? Are we working this? Or are you just trying to figure it out and you're going to keep me posted? Yeah. Yeah, there's something I guess I got to do. Yeah, put it on the calendar. <sighs> yeah. When I, when I have some time. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of time since I'm not getting a dog, so. I'm going to give you Mike's number then. You can text him. Like, talk to him. <laughs> talk to my assistant. He does the dirty work for me. Talk to my non-paid intern assistant. I'm just I'm just a friend that likes to Uber to you. <laughs> Did you Uber here? Yeah, I always Uber here. You are you, you just came from work. Yeah, I don't just wear a suit for nothing. Wasn't it nice today? Or no. Yeah. What What do you think? I'm gonna walk here? Yeah. Why not? So he's there. Last thing to roll us out. Are you a lover or are you a fucker? Oh. You know it's crazy, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover now. Yeah, you're you know a big what, love guy. You know what I was thinking <laughs> actually? I was I had this thought this morning, which is crazy. We, the last time we had 
Okay, well, I guess there's like context behind it. Doesn't make sense. Whatever. I, I, I told you last time that like I've been lasting very long, and mm-hmm. like the last couple of times I haven't been, and I was waiting for her to ask me like why, not like a disappointment why, but like a you know why you know why did it automatically change. And I'm at the point now where, like, I'm not obviously as promiscuous as I think I used to be, or at least it shit shut down, so I don't really know. I, I'd like to think I'm not. But I'm wondering if, like, and I think this is kind of like a, a, a realization that most people probably have as they get older. Like, sex used to not be that important to me in terms mm-hmm. of, like, I don't care that I had it. It's like, oh, I have it. It's not important that I love the fucking person or whatever. Yeah. But I think, like, as I'm getting older, it's like, as I'm more attracted to you, emotionally and as like a person i'm also more attracted to you like physically for sure and i think like i'm probably getting a little bit more into that space where nice. it's going into my cock and making a difference Just there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when me and heather first started like having sex in the beginning i didn't even know how, how like i didn't even look at her because i didn't know that was like a thing because <laughs> all my sex was drunk and uh-huh. i was like you probably don't want to look at me in this face and then when i started looking at her and then you start having that love sex it's Mm -hmm. dude you're like a firework down there. it's very intense yeah Yeah, it's just incredible Uh and once you start knowing the body you know what the the switches are it's game over yeah so i I think like slowly getting into there but it's you brought that up and i thought about that a little bit recently so i was like drunk i'm still a fucker yeah oh hell yeah you're getting the weird fucking pieces sober girl i love you (laughs) let me wine and dine it yeah yeah i'm a i'm a lover i guess officially for the for the time being let me know I'll keep you posted. We'll yell about it. Please leave a fucking rating and review. You. No, you know what? Can you stop saying that? Because people... You think people don't want to do it because I say that? Well, no, I don't. I think that's irrelevant, but people are DMing me, which I love. It's a nice thing on Twitter, and it's, uh, you know, it's nice. But I, at a certain extent, I feel kind of pathetic because I feel like they're like, ah, Steve needs this. We don't know where he's at in life. And I'm like, I'm, I'm also good. wondering... I'm good right now, man. Like... <laughs> I'm not hurting like this is just something we've just kept doing and I'm I'm not crying over here but I, I love the DMs but I feel like people are doing it out of sorriness you really think so <laughs> because they're like you're doing great kid it's like I mean they're just encouraging you. yeah maybe it's, see this other thing it's hard I'm to just, stand in, t- I just, in the fucking arena with I, Goliath baby Apollo damn, damn. why you gotta end like, why you gotta, the other thing was when Brandon was here for the Super Bowl it, it vanished he left. Yeah, he yeah, left. I saw it. It's not there. Oh, you saw it. I'm I saw not, it once, I never and then it. It, it like went away. Yeah, and I I actually tried to. He look probably for, took it back. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't. He would figure it out. Yeah, a fucking diabolical bitch. Yeah, I don't know, man. We're getting likes though. It's it's a it's a it's yeah, one up. Whatever. Fuck iTunes. Fuck you. Fuck Papa Doc. Fuck a clock. In a sock. Skirt. <laughs> Your voice, you could just always use the sound bar. Just like make 50 sound bars before the episode. You think I can make, you think? We could do a whole video. I was going to say, bar. like you asking questions and me having eight pre made sound bars. We should try bar. that and I'll give you like a loose subjects. So then you already have a pre. I, was, two, I would four, need six, para- eight, eight questions. I would need parameters. Oh, you know what fucked up? I would need parameters on the context of what? No the, mic on there. Mm hmm. I would need param- fuck it. I would need parameters, yeah, on like number of words, number of sentences that I could put. Like if it needs to be just like one phrase or one word, I might have a problem with it. But if it's if it's like I get to say a full sentence, I could think of good ones. I would just I one of them would just be like, That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This is the worst question I've ever heard. And everything you said, I would just hit that fucking skirt. Oh, this is too good to be this true. Is too, this is bad. This is bad news. This is bad. I might just start recording all my content down here. Content God. What are you going to call it? This thing. I know it's called a soundboard, but... uh, Honestly, I might just call it the skirt board. Love that. Let her rip. Let's get the skirt board.